Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy here, and today we're talking grow lights. It's not an easy thing to buy a grow light anymore. There's so many things that can get you uh, bogged down with decision fatigue, uh, efficiency, how long it's gonna last, all those different factors. So what we're doing is we've broken it down for you, and we got an expert, Anton, from EnergyWise, who's gonna explain to us a couple of things that you have to, have to, have to be on the lookout for when you're buying a grow light. There's a couple of old paradigms, like watts, uh, you know, how many watts, uh, equals how good your grow light is those things are not true anymore you guys have to be so careful out there when looking for grow lights and as always uh, thanks so much for energy wise for uh, coming on and giving us some time and thanks to the guys who support our grow shop it really means the world to us so guys hope you enjoy and let's take it away hey Anton thanks so much for joining us today to share some of your knowledge how are you Hey, well, thanks, Andy. It's fun for having me back, bro. Yeah, any it's time, awesome. any time. Um, yeah, let's jump straight in. And uh, if you can help give us a little bit of clarity on uh, the first thing that we want to discuss is is when people are looking at a grow light, they're obviously seeing just like, it's still a big proponent, is like how many watts the light is consuming. But there's quite a big misconception around just looking at the, the wattage of the light. Sure. No, um, look, Besides for the fact that we have so many versions or, or um, yeah, I'd say versions of LEDs and they come out like every 10 to 12 months, you're going to get another version of an LED and he's going to be slightly more efficient than the previous one and maybe give you mm. a slightly different spectrum. And uh, so what he's giving you, or more importantly, maybe your plants, mm. um, <laughs> is, is slightly different. And so for you to just talk what's blasé from mm. year to year to year, maybe it's going to catch you out a little bit, uh, whereas you're not keeping up to date with, um, with the latest gen of, of technology mm. that's out there. It's something that uh, I think like, a, like obviously HPS, it was like a big, uh, a big factor, you know, because that was almost like the correlation between output and, and uh, par that your plants can, you know, the, the par that your plants can actually use was almost like directly proportional. The more watts you cram in, the more like output that your lights, that your plants are going to use. Um, yes. That was sort of more directly proportional, but now I think with LED, it changes the game a lot. And I think most growers uh, are moving towards LED. Uh, but then on that, now that it's not, if it's just a little bit more than uh, watts that we need to look at, um, I suppose we would look at the PAR as a better understanding of the the output of the light. But is that also then how much the plant can consume? Um, no, you stepped into, into a big field there. <laughs> nice work. Um, so, yeah, we, 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 instead of talking what, it's perhaps a little bit better to talk about um, the package that the light has. And, and, and we call it the package, and it's um, basically measured in micromoles per, per second. And it's the amount of light or the amount of power uh, photons that the light can emit every second mm. and so that we call the package and that's me measured in micromoles per second and is your ppf your photon mm. photosynthetic photon flux yeah um, which is and the it's equivalent measured... of candle yeah. candle uh what did they used to call luck with can like candle light uh how many uh, candles that's... is the it's your light. it's your lumen yeah. Your lumen package, basically. Yeah, yeah, but that's not the usable spectrum. It's it's not all. Well, I mean, uh, in lumens, we we are only counting the light that is perceived by our Visible. eyeballs, hundred uh, okay, percent. Yeah. And when we talk about the par region, we talk about uh, the the full region between four and seven hundred nanometers that uh, that the plants are experiencing and they, they count it all. Whereas we have a sensitivity curve uh, with our light, with our eyes. And so it's, we don't take the full region uh, of the extents of our sensitivity. We actually weight it. And in the middle, we get a higher weighting uh, as opposed to on the outsides of the curve. And then that's something, I mean, I know you can obviously do a, um, you can do a, a decent reading with like a, a just a, a power meter, but like, is there, I know some of the facilities are using a bit more advanced tech with their, with their readings. 
So developing power maps, for instance. No, uh, developing power maps. If you've got a handheld spectrometer, uh, you've you've got a lot of power in your hand because, as you guys have done in your laboratory, as I've seen on your other sessions, where you've actually set up a light and gone and and made your own power map mm -hmm. uh, through empirical readings. Brilliant idea. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And and quite clever, even on an installation, to do that and to do it twice a year and to record mm -hmm. that and see how your lights are performing and if there's any changes there. I think we're going to get into that a little bit later. But um, but so you certainly can do that. The other way is if your LED manufacturer has a laboratory, we have machines called goniometers that we mm -hmm. can spin the light fitting in our laboratory and, and get a 3D computer file that um, allows us to make these power maps on software on the computer. Mm. And they are pretty lifelike. We can, we can verify them afterwards, after installation. So we'll do that as a design. And then afterwards, in the install, we can verify it, which is quite cool. I think that's yeah, that's absolutely key to picking your your light um, choice because you can get certain lights that maybe don't have that access, you know, that data available, and you can choose a light that has that. And like for whatever your use case is, uh, and the output case, you know, like how important this is going to be to get consistency and accuracy, is going to judge whether you need that sort of data when making the purchase. Um, there's a lot of I mean, it's still, I mean, I'll personally now I'm going to step into, into a zone of my not so clued up on, um, I'm quite clued on from the rest, but to be honest, the, the spectrum readings and UV and IR, I know UV and IR are more and more important, but the sort of different color spectrums of the lights, I would be, uh, I wouldn't confidently say that. I'm an expert at that. Is there something particular that uh, users out there should be looking for when they're looking for a specific uh, wavelength or color spectrum in a in a light? And also, I suppose UV and IR. Um, for the for the most part, Andy, I'd say that when you are vegetative growing, you and and propagating, you you're looking at a more blue rich spectrum. Mm. So when you uh, when you're looking at that spectrum distribution, spectral distribution, you're looking for a higher spark in the blue area, which is between four and 500 nanometers, um, rather than your reds, which is your six to 700 nanometers. Um, and then for flowering, the plants, the plants switch over into a flowering state and perform better during flowering with a red rich spectrum. Mm, so, mm. Uh, it can be very expensive to buy both spectrums and have both lights. Some light fittings allow you to switch between the two different spectrums. Mm. And, um, and sometimes you take a middle of the road and you get uh, a good, uh, not the best vegging, and you get a good flowering light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, it really comes down to the grower and, and what your budget is. and and how you want to proceed. I don't, yeah, it, it sounds like they're not necessarily, um, yeah, it's never really been a deal breaker, but it does, it does help if you want to, you know, have that particular set. And I think uh, now I'm stepping out of a cannabis space, but it's, it's it, the certain spectrums are more important if you're not growing cannabis. For, and I believe roses have a very specific spectrum and you like it, it color profile whereas i think cannabis we just have the focus on either uh your reds and then your blues at different points anyway um uv and ir is that something that you want to see in a in a light uv chips and ir chips is that a must um infrared apparently has some very good abilities to turn the plant into flowering quite quickly which is quite interesting and uh, obviously keep it there in the once it's once it's turned um and the the UV from I'm I'm no expert, but I've from what I've been seeing, it can help uh, the plant produce more THC percentage. Mm. Um, it's it's like a sunscreen almost a natural sunscreen that the plant is producing the THC uh. to counteract the UV. 
And um, and so the UV chips have also started being used uh, in the grows for right. that reason. Try and, and up the THC. But I don't believe, I mean, it's, I, I'm still seeing lights coming out these days that don't have uh, UV. And I, I'm also IR, but UV is not on every uh, main, 100%. mainstream light just yet. It's not a deal breaker. It's not. A, and, and I think for the most part, most lights are, are non-deal breakers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and marijuana, at the end of the day, it's considered a weed and, and it grows prolifically. Um, I think... If you want to start tweaking your grow to get the most out of it, if it's now mm -hmm. a commercial grow and, and you want to flip to flowering fast and you want to try and get more crops in a year, and then those small subtleties become, I think, a little bit more Mind important. Over a big scale, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. What about the the longevity of a of a, a unit? I mean, it's not exactly uh, not exactly every LED is made the same, and uh, not uh, you know LEDs aren't made the, to last the same as each other. Is there any sort of uh, uh, data that consumers can look out for when? Uh, and to, uh, it, besides the, the standard people say, well, 50,000 hours, you know, like 100,000 hours, you know, besides that. Yeah. So uh, interesting. Um, and it is another very big field. But uh, generally speaking, there's a term called the LMB uh, values. And the LMB values are a <clears throat> an idea of how much light will be left in your light fitting at a particular time frame. So you mentioned 50,000 hours and a lot of the horticultural fittings, if they do have a longevity rating, are, are rated at 50,000 or else maybe more for, if you only had an 18 hour grow day for five years, I think it comes out to about 32 or 34,000 hours, which is mm -hmm. five years probably maximum in the horticultural field anyway. But so the LMB rating tells you it will always be qualified by a number of hours. So they are telling you that there will be so much light left in your light fitting after so many thousand hours. And then maybe there should also be a temperature. So saying the maximum temperature that that fitting can be held at mm -hmm. an ambient temperature. So your, your mm -hmm. ambient room temperature. Um, and those three things are what tell you about the longevity. A lot of guys have an L90, an L80, or an L70 um, longevity rating. And so it's going to be two ratings. It's like an L number and an M number, usually. And, and, and a then B again, number. An L and B number, and then against a... Um, against a generally 50,000 hours or, or, you know, a, a set amount of hours that is tested. Yep. Okay, cool. So the L, uh, 90s, 80, 70, right? L, 90s, 80s, 70s, and then you get a B10, a B20, and a B50. The first number tells you more about how much of the light should be left in the fitting. Uh, the second number tells you what confidence they've got. So an L, 90, B50 means that you should have 10% left, 10% uh, loss in your fitting mm -hmm. after a certain number of hours. And the B50 tells you the certainty. So they are only certain of 50% of those fittings, of those chips being up at the 90% mark. Yeah. The other 50% of your chips, they don't have any idea of. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, you can, if you can get a B10 value, you've got a lot more certainty in your output. A B50 value gives you a lot less certainty with your output. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's critical because I mean, imagine uh, on a domestic scale, they there is some room for fluctuation, but I uh, but even on the commercial scale, I mean, that could really be a you know wake up call in five years time. It could, <laughs> yeah, it could bend your brain. You you yeah. just wouldn't know why your why your plants aren't producing that they should. Uh, it comes back to why you should have power in your hand and have that spectrometer, mm. have a measuring device that that you can data log your own your own values and come back to them after year five and know exactly how much your light has lost, mm. and hence whether you need to put more light in there to keep up your spec, yeah. um, or sure, else yeah. at least acknowledge why your outputs are changing, you know, and not have to scratch your head and and try and. 
<laughs> find out via I don't know. Yeah, magic. well, I mean, this might be something interesting. I mean, I've I've never really considered this as part of the secondhand market, and I know a lot of guys may be looking at considering a secondhand light, and sure. you know, you can't really go on the. It's not like a computer screen or a, a, you know, like things like that where it's, it kind of stays the same for the whole time. But something like that with mass output, you know, it's three years old. You're thinking, you know, I'm saving, getting the light at fifty percent off, but maybe it's only got two more years on it you know it's not guaranteed to last you it's very interesting on on that front and last bonus question um <laughs> are Shoot. you uh what's your opinion sort of for plants and uh maximum power uh levels you know like uh the over 1200 uh with co2 okay. supplementation where 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 you at on that <laughs> yeah look uh personal experience is is very slim at at uh, the very high level. So, but I've, I've listened to a few uh, good guys speaking and um, I think from what I've, from what I've ascertained, you can start getting benefits from, I think 500 to a thousand is considered uh, commercial scale growing. So mm -hmm. 500 micromoles per meter squared per second, all the way up to a thousand is considered commercial. I believe anything from 700 about 700 750 and above can benefit from the addition of co2 mm -hmm. and from what i've read it seems like that that benefit of adding co2 tops out at about a thousand four hundred micromoles mm -hmm. per meter squared per second um i mean those are massive yeah. <laughs> values um at 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 a thousand micromoles, um, I've got clients who've who've appreciated a half a meter gap between the plants and the lights because you, at those levels you start frying the tips mm -hmm. of your plants and you you know you the actually heat, need yeah. like a distance to to save you from the di from the heat. We've got lenses which allow us to project that light further down um, mm. better than say a, a fitting that doesn't have lenses, but um, at at a thousand micromoles, we're sitting around five hundred watts a square meter. Um, so you start multiplying that yeah. out <laughs> over a couple of square meters, and it and it becomes a ridiculous amount <laughs> of energy draw, uh, which let alone uh, just being able to supply to to have the energy to have the money to pay for it, Eskom still got to be able to supply it to you, which can mm. also be a Jeez. an inconvenience. <laughs> Well, that could be a whole other yeah. discussion. But yeah, uh, oh. for today, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Anton, it's always a pleasure to have you and for sharing the knowledge. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you again in the future.